we cannot have still, compulsory religious education. No, but therefore, if we accept your supposition, if it's a non-minority institution, can they impart religious education? So, well settled that the legislature, whether it's the state legislature or parliament, can take away the basis of an act of, uh, of uh, the basis of a judgment. So what you can't do is to directly override a judgment, right? So, for instance, you know, is this amendment, by the way, in 81, is it retrospective or is it prospective? Yeah, the way I request your lordships to read, Pasha doesn't say what they are apprehending. Pasha is actually clause one imposes an absolute bar, absolute bar. right Correct. that if you are if you are funded wholly out of state funds you cannot have a religious instruction at all that's clause one clause two lifts the bar which is evident from the use of the words nothing in clause one one it's an exception to one it's an, it's an exception to one now what three does is three imposes a requirement when you are receiving any aid or of course recognition you're not in the recognition aspect right now so three is conditioned if you are receiving any aid even if you are receiving five percent aid or one percent aid from that from the state three applies and what does three say three says is that you can have religious instruction but you can't make it compulsory unless in the case of a minor the parents or the guardian consent therefore three in that sense one applies only where you are wholly funded by the state. Even if you are not wholly funded by the state, you cannot compulsorily have religious instruction, which therefore means that if you are not funded by the state, you can make religious instruction compulsory. There's no difficulty. If you are funded by the state, whether wholly or in part, at the least, if you are funded in part, you are receiving any aid because it says receiving aid. If you are receiving aid, you cannot have compulsory religious instruction. That's the purport of that, that, that's the middle of the way. That but, if somebody wants, but if you are wholly funded by the state, you cannot have any religious instruction at all. That even is with consent. Even with consent. Even with consent. So even if you are not receiving aid, but if you are a recognized institute, yeah, and you rec cannot come. You know, and recognized. So if it's it's either way. If you are recognized, but you are not uh, receiving aid from the state. You but cannot have compulsory religious No, but therefore, if we accept your supposition, if it's a non-minority institution, can they impart religious education? So, yes, subject to uh, 28.3. But then 28.3, as per your, your the stand taken by you, will only apply to non-fully funded institutions. So a non-minority institution, which does not receive any aid, you can have compulsory uh, religious instruction. Yes, no, no, no. Like, I, like you. But even if, a, if you're a, if you're a non-minority institution and you're receiving any aid from the state, state you can't have compulsory religious instruction. Correct. And so therefore, 93 applies. 28 is agnostic to whether you belong to the minority or otherwise. Correct. Uh, tw Correct. 28 applies. No, no, that's not EMFI no also recognized. Minority or non -minority. As Brother Khan says, 28 draws no distinction between whether you are a minority or non-minority. Correct. No, it's, that's what I say. 28 is agnostic provision. Whether you are minority or non-minority. It, it is also because 28 occurs in a subtitle or subpart exactly, called Mother. right to freedom of religion. Yes, that applies to everybody. 29 and 30 only talks cultural of minority. Cultural and education rights. Yes. And 29 and 30 only uses the word minority. But the impact thereof. You see, if we accept this argument, Look, then therefore, it's a minority institution which is fully funded by the state cannot impart religious education. Correct. And, and in spite once, of Article 30, Clause 1. My Lord, once Section 9 is deleted, compulsory education in Muslim students, whatever limited uh, minority status was there, that also went in 51. Well settled that the legislature, whether it's the state legislature or parliament, can take away the basis of an act of, uh, of uh, the basis of a judgment. So, for instance, if uh, a judgment holds a statutory provision to be uh, violative of Article 14 on the ground that it does not comport with natural justice, the legislature can introduce a provision for natural justice 
so as to make it in conformity with the law by recognized by supplanting the deficiency which was noticed by the by the judgment so what you can't do is to directly override a judgment right so for instance you know the classical case was madan mohan patak where there was a binding settlement an industrial settlement on which a mandamus was issued by the supreme court that settlement was sought to be overridden by an amending by an amending provision which the court held this you can't do because it has attained finality now what does 2l do 2l or before we go to 2l what did basha do basha said that amu was not established by a muslim minority but was established under an act of the imperial legislature right and it is administered not by the minority but is administered by the by this institution yeah. by the act can by merely a amendment to the definition can you take away the basis of basha because not my legal l does possibly what the argument and this we may have to hear the other side in response because this was not argued in the in the opening that 2l merely alters the definition of the expression university but does the alteration of the definition of the expression university take away the basis of basha that the very establishment now what what this what the 81 amendment does is it doesn't purport to establish the university at all now it says that the word establish is taken away from the preamble but incorporated remains remains incorporated remains then 2l says that it was established by the muslim by by, by the indian muslim muslims of india originating as the mao college aligarh correct and which was subsequently incorporated the argument rejected is in in basha is incorporated by way of a definition now is this amendment by the way in 81 is it retrospective or is it prospective lord uh... lord our argument before the anaba high court is it's declaratory in nature and therefore retrospective very retrospective that was the argument lord uh... i don't wish to give examples but if you can change history by changing definition in a statute your lordships can with your lordships wide experience and wisdom visualize lord what can be done there are several historical facts man no, no parliament Which can do it may man lord but parliament no, think parliament has the power to do it parliament has the power to do it because parliament can while implementing a statute subject to a challenge under article 14 Parliament can competence. Say yes, it has the competence to say this. But is whether it when he enacts the law, effacing Basha or not, that's a question. Huh, that the the more important substantive point is: is this really declaratory, as they are arguing, or are you merely amending the definition without taking away the basis of Basha? The latter you cannot do. The former you can do. You can't sit in appeal. The Parliament cannot sit in appeal and set aside the judgment. It can if there is some lacuna found by the court. that lacuna can be filled up but lord it is my submission and so basha said that amu was not established uh, basha was uh, says amu was not established by the muslim minority intra party dispute but is it was established under an act of uh, or yes. act of the imperial legislature thus this can merely an amendment to the definition of the expression university take away that basis of basha and my lord their argument that it was established by the educational institution of their uh, by muslims of india which originated at so take away the basis of basha you have to take away the underlying facts on the basis of which basha has been uh, decided have they really altered those underlying facts there, by this i i requested your lordships that i would like to read basha the way i request your lordships to read basha doesn't say what they are apprehending basha is a sui generis alabad uh, uh, aligarh munis municipal uh, uh, university case and it defines and records certain factual findings also which my lord uh, this amendment of the parliament seeks to do away with 